Hi everybody, Callan Bentley here from Piedmont Virginia Community College. We're here in Virginia's beautiful Rockfish Valley looking at the Blue Ridge Mountains and I wanted to talk a little bit about the geologic history of these mountains. So um, geologic history is sort of built from the, the bottom up. Um, so the oldest rocks in our area are a series of igneous intrusions called granites and then the metamorphosed versions of those granites which uh, we call granite gneiss, all right? And the granite gneiss tends to have an alignment of the mineral grains in it. So it, uh, it splits more easily along that grain, just like if you're splitting logs for a, a campfire, it's easier to split them along the grain than across the grain. The granite though itself doesn't have any grain. It's the same in every direction. Hey, anyway, these are the oldest rocks in our region. They're around 1 billion years old. They formed during a great ancient episode of mountain building which is what we call it when continents crash together very slowly over geological timescales, but it ends up um, altering the rocks along that collision zone. That collision built an early supercontinent, which is just a name for a really big continent. And that supercontinent was called Rodinia. Rodinia was vast, but it wasn't as vast as the later supercontinent you may be familiar with called Pangaea. Well, Rodinia broke apart and as it broke apart, cracks opened up in the uh, crust of the earth and those cracks brought lava up to the surface. So lava traveled along those cracks and then flowed out onto earth's surface, flooding the landscape in a dark colored, fine grained rock called a basalt. So these layers of basalt built up and built up. In addition to the lava flows, there are some uh, volcanic mud flows that have big chunks in them, and there are some volcanic ash flows as well, um, but mostly it's a whole lot of volcanic rock. And um, that volcanism accompanied the breakup of this early supercontinent, Rodinia, and the, the birth of a new ocean basin. So as Rodinia's fragments went skittering across the face of the globe, skittering perhaps being a, a little perhaps too evocative. This is very slow. They're moving at centimeters per year. But at any rate, a big ocean basin opened up in their wake. And that ocean basin was called the Iapetus Ocean. It was named for the Greek Titan, who was the father of Atlas. And Atlas is the namesake of the modern Atlantic Ocean. So um, what happened to Virginia's Blue Ridge geological province at that point is on top of these really deep basement rocks, the granites and granite gneisses, and on top of these surface lava flows, we ended up getting a series of sedimentary rocks. One that's uh, pebbles and sand, that's called the Weaverton Formation, and on top of that there are some um, muddy rocks, those are called the Harper's Formation. On top of that some very clean fine-grained sandstone, the Antietam Formation, which has these really characteristic little worm burrows in it, little things that look like soda straws going down into the rocks. Um, these are really easy to see if you climb up on top of Turk Mountain in Shenandoah National Park. There are several billion of them there to take a look at. And on top of that, some of the uh, carbonate rocks, the limestones and dolo stones that we find all the caves cut into out in the Shenandoah Valley. All right, so that basically is the entire rock sequence of the Blue Ridge Geological Province. Um, but all those rocks started off to the east of us. Um, their original position was in a place like Richmond. And then when the Iapetus Ocean was closed and the former fragments of Rodinia came back together to collide again and make a new supercontinent, Pangaea, then those rocks got broken off and tilted and shoved over to the west. So they ended up in a new place, which is where we find them today. So the sedimentary rocks are now on their side in the western Blue Ridge. And then the um, former lava flows of the, the breakup of Rodinia, those got metamorphosed. They became a rock called greenstone. And that greenstone basically makes up the spine of the Blue Ridge itself. All right, you can find this rock in great profusion along the Blue Ridge Parkway and along Skyline Drive and Shenandoah National Park. And then here in the Rockfish Valley, there were actually um, these very um, squeezed out, smeared out rocks in a big zone called the Rockfish Valley Fault Zone or the Rockfish Valley High Strain Zone, where the rocks were deformed 
but under really high temperatures and pressures. So rather than just breaking in a giant crack, they ended up smearing out more like um, if you stepped on a banana and it's smeared out underneath your shoe. That's kind of like the, this Rockfish Valley uh, high strain zone. So that's a quick summary of the various geological events that got the Blue Ridge to where it is today.